Hello everybody, this is September and I'm checking in from the test server today. In this video, we're going to take a look at the drop rates in the new RNG box, the candy collector's crate, as well as take a look at some of the new items in the marketplace. We're going to look at some of the credit items as well as the loyalty items. That includes the new warehouse, new dances, and new costumes. So before I get started, I do have a few people to thank here. And first up is Nadury16 from Twitch, who donated 20 of these new RNG boxes last Friday. Thank you very much. And also a old guildmate of mine on the Thunderwing server, Terralore, for donating 270 boxes here on the test server. Thank you very much, man. You rock. And finally, I also need to thank Nacho Libre from the Thunderwing server for selling me some credits. Uh, that that allowed me to round out my 300 boxes as well as get some of the new items that we're going to showcase here in this video. Okay, so first let's talk about the new new costumes available outside of the RNG box. So there is actually a total of five new ones or five returning ones. And the first up is the Embalmed Green Man. And this is a loyalty costume. I didn't personally buy this one because even on the test server, loyalty is pretty limited. And uh, I just spent a big chunk on the uh, broomstick, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But you can pre preview these new costumes simply by clicking on it in the marketplace window, as you can see here. So all of you that are tired of these Yada outfits, um, Tryon has pointed out that this one, as well as the one inside of the candy crate, are going to be the last ones for a while. Next up, we have the Blood Mall Evening Wear. This is available for, again, loyalty, and that's 350 This is actually a return of this costume, and it is a fairly popular one for those of you that are fans of the historical vampire-esque look uh, next is the prisoner's pride uniform this comes complete with tattoos a wife beater zebra stripes and the dog collar i believe this is the official outfit for the prison gang the flaming 69s next we have the D tomb bound wraps which i actually featured in my recent holotide video so if you're interested in looking more about this and what's going on here Take a look at my last video. And lastly, we have the Pumpkin Charmer costume, which I've actually been wearing since the beginning of the video. This is a dyeable costume, as well as the Tune Bound wraps. And I actually appreciate those costumes that are dyeable because, well, it just allows me to customize it just a little bit more. The Pumpkin Charmer costume is actually my favorite of this lot because I really like this Gandalf look. And I appreciate it because I typically play a mage class. Next up, I would like to talk about the glider. The Storm Duster 1000, which is available for 625 loyalty. This glider is often overlooked, but it is actually very, very useful. First, I want to talk about the way that it dismounts. Typically, when you dismount a glider by landing, you know, gliding across the ground, you get a debuff that prevents you from summoning another glider. Not with this one. You can immediately resummon your glider. This actually makes escaping from enemies or climbing hills very, very easy. So the abilities included with this are pretty useful. So the first one is the Broom Nitro. This gives you a little bit of a lift as well as a 12 meter forward dash. The second ability is another 12 meter dash. So 24 meters total if you can chain cast those. And then third is a, the ability called Stealthy Sweeper. This gives you a 5% speed boost as well as 5 seconds of stealth. That's a good way to drop targets in combat. The final two abilities is just kind of the typical glider stuff. You've got the smoke screen, which actually looks really cool on the uh, broomstick here. And you can buy those from the general vendor for a gold 50 per. 
And also it has the flaming pinion boost, which is a 30% speed boost on the glider for 30 seconds. Again, those are also available from the gen general vendor for 50 silver each. This glider is uh, pretty rare and kind of a little expensive, but I feel for 625 loyalty, this is a solid buy. Okay, next up is the pet, the Anywhere Warehouse, and some of the dance emotes, as well as I got the loyalty item to buff my pet. I actually haven't opened up any of these yet, so I will be recording my actions and adding them to the video unscripted so you can take a look at what I see as I see it. Okay, so first we're going to take a look at these dances here. Uh, these are the credit dances. I have the three credits. I did buy the loyalty ones. Sorry, I can't pre preview those because, well, I don't have the loyalty to do that. Um, so the first three, the first one is going to be Dance All Out, then Dance Robot, and I'll just narrate that here. So these are tradable, and they're 1,200 credits each. And they're actually not a normal dance. They're actually an emote. So you'll see, you'll find them in your combat menu and you can see here that it's unlocked so this is the all out and we'll just right click that and they pointed this out in the try on live stream but if you move unlike other dances they do cut out okay so that was all out <laughs> All right, let's do the robot. It's over here. Oh, typical robot. All right. Next, let's unlock Yacht Arena. That one's there. Right click. Got some nice particle effects there. There it is. Love. Ah, pretty cool. All right, let's take a look at the pet. This is the wrapped Kindle Spirit. Oh, dang. I spent 300 loyalty on this thing, and it came with it. Rip. Well, I can stick it on my bloom thing. All right, so how do we... Holy smokes, I teleported upstairs. Okay. My bed is right above me. And boom. That doesn't seem right. All right, so how do you use this power stone? Well, it can only be equipped and is invisible once equipped. Oh, I see. Oh, okay, so it's got the pet menu. I just wasn't seeing it because my bag was open. All right, so there's that. Um, let's take a look at the skills. Because I just put the Power Stone on it, I get a 35 attack speed boost. And then the skill on the pet is just a buff that will give you plus 10% attack and healing power for 9 seconds. And currently, at the time of this video, the skill is bugged, so it's only giving you 10% of your base. But Tryon said that they attend on fixing that with the next update, and it will be 10% buff, which is based off of your overall stats.
So he likes to be on your right shoulder. Notice how when I turn, he zooms over. Okay. All right. There's that. And the last thing, really excited about this because I didn't have an Anywhere Warehouse on the uh, PTS server. This is 2,500 credits. And this should let me summon a warehouse anywhere. <laughs> All right, that was pretty cool. All right, there we go. Let's see if we can get a good look at him. Kind of pops out of a coffin. Nicely decorated. Good old Daru. Very interesting. Okay, next up I'm going to be taking a look at opening up 300 of these new RNG boxes. Again, this is called the Candy Collector's Crate. Uh, this crate has a wild smattering of stuff in it. Um, but this is actually a crate that I would refer to as a Lunarite slash Synthium crate. In it, you won't find any regrade charms, but you, you can still get some lucky sun, moon, and star points from it. But the main thing, again, that you're going to be seeing out of these is the Tier 2 and Tier 3 Lunarite, as well as a bunch of Synthium in various grades. There's actually some pretty nice stuff in it, despite the fact that there's a lot of kind of junky stuff in it. Uh, the one couple of the things that I'd like to point out is the Pirate Plushy Trove. That is, if it drops, that is a 130 slot chest. And I have one here in my house so you can take a look at. As well as the Aurorian Storage Chest. This is the largest chest in the game, 150 slots. Other things that are notable inside of this crate is Tier 3 Luna Gems, as well as the 3.5 version of the Luna Frost. And finally, another big item is a Wrapped Serendipity Stone, which you can sell for a pretty, pretty nice price. Okay, and so the one rare item and the kind of why people buy these crates is for the Franken Yada costume. And if you watch my last video on the Storm Wraith Kirin crate, you'll know that I'll, I'll be predicting a drop rate of about 1 out of 50 to 1 out of 60 on these costumes. The Storm, Storm Wraith Kirin was exactly 1 out of 60, so we'll see how we do. Okay, so I've got uh, 300 of these. Again, I'm expecting 4 to 6 of these costumes. And since we're not likely to see this costume again for at least a year... Collectors should get them while they can. All right, so I'm going to speed this up and narrate a little bit. But basically, it came out pretty typical. Um, as this video plays, you can see that I tried to align the similar priced items together. Um, I got a costume in my first box. That was amazing. Um, and then another kind of a surprise that you'll see here towards the end of the video, I ended up with a lot of those pirate plushie troves. Um, I think I got a total of six, but I only got one of the big chests, which is the Aurorian storage chest. And at least one of pretty much every item that drops on the boxes. So it's, that's kind of good. And you, as you can see here, there is a couple sections where I didn't get a costume uh, for quite a while. Kind of got a little bit of afraid, but... In the end, I did manage to pull seven costumes, so I did a little better than my original prediction. And this is pretty much the end of them here. There we go. Okay, so for anybody that's having trouble seeing all the stuff that is accumulated here in my inventory. I will actually post a spreadsheet in the video description that will outline all the items, the quantities, as well as the drop rates. Well, that is pretty much it for this video.
I hope you have found it both helpful and informative. If you would like to support me in my efforts to bring you more of these Arc Age related videos, please remember to subscribe and like on your way out. You can also join my Discord channel, follow me on Twitch or Twitter, and if you're interested in taking it to the next level, you can also become a Patreon for as little as $1. Until next time, this is September saying, be well.